Perchlorin rises. There is a new political force in the world, and it's making the oligarchs nervous. Like the Dark Lord or Dark Money, it comes out of nowhere and causes a massive amount of chaos and disruption. Let's call this new creature a Dark, with a D for distributed, an A for adaptive, and a hard CH like an oligarch. The dark evokes the idea of dark money and dark magic, and is easy and kind of fun to say, and can pretty much be added to anything, like dark forces or dark power or dark finance or dark knowledge. You get the idea. The lesson of Trump and GameStop is that the oligarch has evolved from a simple human to become a self-organizing creature of almost limitless power. The nobles have met their new king, and he is indeed the body politic of angry people who will be free, a self-organized agent of human innovation that can move with lightning speed and deadly force to challenge the most powerful men on earth. Like the legend of the one massive alligator that is born when the pond becomes overcrowded, who then proceeds to eat all the weaker alligators in order to restore harmony to the pond, a new kind of oligarch has emerged with the power to destroy the global plutocrats who have grown fat and let greed get in the way of their good sense. This new creature is a distributed, adaptive oligarch with infinite access to capital and an immediate ability to process high quality information out of the noisy swamp of the internet. The traditional oligarch was a rich man with the right connections built over a lifetime of calculated risks and lucky breaks. Today, the internet dramatically speeds up the flow of information and allows instant price discovery and relationship building. What once took a lifetime of careful choices can now be accomplished in a few hours on a message board. There, the process of discovery via upvotes and deportations reveals the ongoing wisdom of the crowd on any subject where there is enough information to calculate the risks of any activity. Historically, the oligarch had a reputation and access to capital which allowed him to seize an opportunity. The oligarchs in Russia became rich after the collapse of the Soviet Union because many of them were Jews who knew each other, so they could call their cousin living in Brighton Beach who was working in the back office of Goldman Sachs for money. Relationships and access to capital win over brains and hard work any day of the week. Today, anyone with an idea can assemble a crowd in hours to test and fund a transaction. We're all Soviet Jews now, and the world, just like the failed Soviet Union, is on sale for the cheap. Trump, like the rise of populism everywhere, was a product of a distributed adaptive oligarchy. Trump's genius was his ability to speed up the political messaging cycle from weeks to hours. He used the message board to test ideas in social media to distribute his message. Whereas the Clinton campaign would hire a consultant to focus group a message and then wait for the agency to produce a TV ad, which would run in a test market, then get rolled out nationwide, Trump would send out a tweet and based on the response, his social media team would buy ads in multiple markets immediately. All of a sudden, the news cycle went from weeks to hours, and the information war became wildly asymmetrical in Trump's favor. The rapid feedback loop created by Trump allowed him to dominate the news cycle and create the appearance of political success, which made the Clinton campaign appear clueless and out of touch, and he won not because he was a genius, but because he allowed the dark force to propel him to victory. In the next election, Biden cleverly sat out the entire information race and allowed the national media to suppress information. Biden also enabled local get out the vote efforts to dominate mail-in voting. This combination of information suppression and vote harvesting gave Biden the appearance of competence while depriving Trump of an opponent in the information war. Biden switched battlefields and left Trump in the dust. While Trump had his meme warriors, 
Biden had an army of information managers who managed the narrative and vote harvesters who could collect thousands of mail-in votes where they would make a difference. In a game where the most votes win, Biden made sure he got the votes, whereas Trump only got the news cycle stripped of energy from the absence of a, an opponent. Since this is a game where the guy with the most votes wins, the dark information manager and vote harvester beat the dark meme warrior. But make no mistake, the dark force won the election. Biden just got out of his way, unlike Hillary. Whereas Trump gave voice to dark information with memes and conspiracies, Biden allowed the dark forces in the journalism community to suppress and shape narratives to his advantage. While Trump relied on the dark energy of the crowds to drive people to the polls, Biden unleashed dark voting when he turned thousands of poll workers and get out the vote people into a massive self-organizing ballot harvesting operation that generated the highest number of votes in history for one of the most boring candidates ever. While that self-organizing class of narrative shapers called journalists has been around for decades, the new force in politics is dark voting, a self-organized internet-based chat room driven vote harvesting operation that is now in charge of the elections. From now on, the candidate who wins is the one who best appeals to the dark forces. Ideas don't matter anymore. In a connected world, the game is to find and ride the dark energies to victory. Finance is no different than politics. Before GameStop, the goal was to take a position, then talk up your book with your friends on the golf course and in the financial press. A reasonable investment thesis, when combined with the momentum of an oligarch with a reputation to protect, would generate enough heat in the market to create what George Soros calls reflexivity, a concept he ripped off from René Girard, a brilliant French philosopher. What Soros was trying to explain is that the game is rigged because that's the point of the game. The jungle isn't fair. It's the jungle, a place where an autistic psychopath can sneak up on some country club of a company and kick the shit out of it until they've extracted all the value they can. It's called free market capitalism, and it sucks to be the gazelle when the lions are hungry. When the lions go hunting, the momentum that gets started means that no one else can assemble enough capital to reverse the trend. And besides, there's money to be made just going along for the ride. Why piss off an oligarch? when you could pay off your mortgage from gobbling up his table scraps. Be the hyena and take sloppy seconds, not the hero who gets a statue on his grave. The only person who can fight an oligarch is another oligarch. Everyone knows fights are messy and oligarchs aren't stupid. Lanchester's Law, a World War I era military strategy discovered by some clever math types, says to only attack when you have a greater than 1.5 advantage in military assets, which when compounded over the course of battle, results in a greater than 97% chance of success. Oligarchs know this rule intuitively, which is why oligarch fights are rare, but spectacular. GameStop changes all that. Now, when an oligarch signals his attack, a group of investors in a forum can instantly organize around an opposing investment thesis with very little individual financial risk and zero reputational risk since no one on Wall Street bets is worried about being blackballed from the fancy golf club or not getting their kid into the fancy preschool. What's next for the distributed adaptive oligarch? The dark force has emerged from the shadows and now unlimited dark money will begin to enter the battlefields. With almost unlimited access to capital, the rules of engagement that require a greater than 97% chance of victory will always be met by the dark force and the finance and politics will finally become the dominions of the will of the people and not the playgrounds of the oligarchs.